Hello and thanks for joining us. We are talking politics today with John Jackson from the Paul Simon Public Policy Institute. And John, we're talking about the stopgap budget. Now, a lot of states outside of here may look at this and kind of chuckle at the fact that we're excited about a temporary budget, but this is a big deal in Illinois. So I thought it might be a good idea to let people understand what it is and what it isn't. It took one big major concern really off the table, but it didn't address everything. Well, it's a big step forward. It's certainly better than not doing anything, uh, but it really just leaves us in the lurch after the election and come January, all the stuff's got to be done over again. And really the most important thing it doesn't do is to provide for a revenue stream. Mm -hmm. uh, they are spending money as though their revenue is going to be there. Uh, the revenue stream will fund part of it, but it's going to start running out again at the end of December, and we're going to be back in the soup in January. This is something I was asking you. Is this, is this a, a matter of, so that people understand this, passing a temporary budget, is this a matter of spending money that the state already has and has allocated out, or is this, like you said, the revenue is not being addressed and it's just spending money that we're not even sure about? Well, it's, I say directly, it's spending the money that comes in every day and every week to the comptroller's office. She knows about what to expect every day and every week. Right. And roughly speaking, that will come to, say, $32 billion. Two problems, though. She's got on her desk $8 billion worth of unpaid bills that have grown from 5 to $8 billion just since we put the income tax back to where it was. Right. And that's going to continue to be a problem, but it's also about five billion short of the expenditure level. So again, difficult decisions were just put off till after the election. So two major things, it does not address, address the eight billion backlog in bills that exactly. the state owes and also revenue stream. But another thing that we're hearing about a lot this week is that social services are saying, yes, well, this is great, we have a temporary budget, but we still haven't seen a dime of that. Well, that's because that eight billion worth of bills are stacking up and all of their bills are lost and their new bills will go to the bottom. Therefore, who knows how many months it'll be before they get down to whatever that agency's mm -hmm. billing for that month or year happens to be. So it really doesn't fix any of those problems. Right, and as we know, a lot of social <coughs> services have had to close their doors and we could see more of that. Uh, well, I saw Cornerstone said, Centerstone said they weren't going to bring theirs back because they still couldn't depend uh, on the revenue. And so those people they laid off are still laid off. And lastly, uh, John, we could talk about this all day, but I'd like to wrap this up. We were talking about the fact that, you know, a, a lot of your average um, citizens in Illinois haven't felt the full impact of the problems that are going on in this state. That may have happened if schools didn't open, yeah. which we seem to avert that with this temporary budget. But that could change. This could be something that you say, come December, January, everybody may see the impact of what's been going on in the state. Well, I think we'll be back to offices closing. I think there will be state services not being rendered. Uh, state parks, again, threatened to close. And uh, there's a couple of universities, not SIU, but other universities that are in weaker shape. Some of those are saying they're in bad shape for the spring mm -hmm. uh, and no MAP grants. We don't have any MAP money for the fall in any of the universities, so there are all kinds of students won't get any assistance from the state. So regardless, at this point, eventually everyone is going to understand and feel just how well, bad. Well, maybe not everyone, but certainly if you're paying attention, you'll understand it. Thanks, John. We appreciate you being here today. Sure. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Talking Politics.